Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back to talk about the World Arena Oath season. They finally got around to releasing the season infographic. The season's been over for like five weeks, I want to say, at this point, right? Um, usually these come out about, I want to say like two or three weeks. I don't know what the holdup was. Maybe I'm wrong on my timetables here, but you know what it is. They released an infographic. So let's compare and contrast with how things were that season versus my end of season review. If you had watched my Emperor account review, you know that I talked about the dire straits that I felt this game was in at the end of this season. I felt that games were either one minute blowouts or 10 plus minute slogs that are super uninteresting and unfun for the player, the person that is playing against said player, and then any potential audience that they could have on streaming platforms. So... I was hoping for a shakeup. We did eventually get one going into, I believe we were going into the contention season with Lionheart Sermia being the skin. So we did get a major shakeup and we'll, we'll talk about, I guess, some of the things if they're pertinent to the tables and information that is in this season. But at the end of the last season, we got into a rhythm where essentially C Phantom Paldus was basically unbeatable in the hands of somebody that knew what they were doing. Uh, KJ was just way too dominant. I felt like with the character at the end of last season, he had like something like a, a near 80% win rate, I want to say, and very easily and convincingly stole the number one slot in Hall of Fame because, again, no real counterplay to the character. So let's see how that checks as we go through here and take a look at everything. So there's their little uh, introduction here. Hello, Air. This is Epic 7. We're pleased to show the infographic discussing the O season. Uh, yeah, so it was concluded on May 4th here. So yeah, about a month or so. Starting with this infographic, we will refine the data by tier and season to provide more detailed information and guidance. So they're dividing everything up by tier. So we'll get to see, I guess, stuff by tier. Explain what pre-bans are. Uh, the percentages of matches in which a hero was pre banned amongst all matches, right? So... This is basically beforehand. First pick is how likely the person is to take be taken first overall in the draft. And then pick refers to the heroes selected by two players for a match and includes their first pick. If the pick is 50, pick rate is 50%, it means they were drafted by either player for half of all matches. Okay. So, most pre ban characters. Surprisingly, maybe Captain Landy. I would have thought it would have been something uh, a bit different. See Phantom Politis here at number six at 25.2%. My pre bans, in case you were wondering, were Death Dealer Ray and See Phantom Politis at the end of last season. So, my preferred bans were three and six. So, not super uncommon, but um, Landy at 38.3 and Zeo at 36.1% says to me that the majority of the people playing World Arena are Cleavers. So for people saying that Cleave is quote-unquote dead, um, <laughs> I feel like uh, you're, you're, you're not being uh, honest here. You're being a bit disingenuous because anybody who's got like their pre-bans is like maybe Captain Landy and Zio or like Bellion. We are here at 13%. I feel like those are like the telltale signs that somebody's a Cleaver, right? Is like Landy plus Bellion, or potentially, depending on your cleave style, you are going like Landy plus Zio. So Landy, obviously very powerful. Uh, turn two character that could just random out and win a game. Banning Zio suggests that you want turn one and you don't want your opponent to have the ability to contest your ability to take turn one, right? Because uh, like even though Bellion is here at 13, right? That doesn't mean that you can't still cleave without... Certain characters, Flitica Cleave, for example, uh, Fumir Cleave, there's Cleaves that use Death Deal Array. There's a lot of ways to just instantly win the game, Blooming Lytica, right? That don't really care at all about Bellion. So, yeah, let's see what else is on this list. Abyssal, the other randoming out character. Uh, Laia at 7, that's a little bit surprising. I, I would have thought that Laia would have been a bit higher. In the pre-bans, considering how dominant I feel this character actually was, I feel like right now, currently, on live, that she is the best character in Epic 7. And I thought at the end of last season that she was, like, a top three character uh, behind C Phantom Politis and maybe, like, I don't know, Death Dealer Ray felt pretty strong also at the end of last season. 
Uh, Lua at 11. That's surprising. Again, it's probably in large part to the fact that Laia is probably the best character in Epic 7 and completely shuts this character out. Uh, Savior Auden. Oh, no. Th thank goodness. No, no Unbound Knight Arwell. <laughs> Every one of these I do, there's always an Unbound Knight Arwell somewhere on here. Um... Uh, let's see. Is there anything else that's like really, you know, not, nothing too surprising here. Like this is probably about what I would expect the top 20 to look like. There's a pretty good reason I feel like for like everything on here, right? AOL controls, Genua and like Gala just instantly kill things. Bellion stops cleave. Urban Shadow Shoe stops you from trying to uh, play Laia. Uh, Icarina stops you from trying to play aggressively. Savior Odin is just annoying. I know players like Elmage really don't like playing against Savior Auden. All right. All right. So we see early on in the season. Uh, so this was coming uh, into February, right? Yeah. So it started in February. Uh, Abyssal was the most uh, pre banned, which I guess makes sense because at that time, I think Abyssal in the season prior to that was the best character in the game. We're very close to it. AOL is still really high up here. Mid stage by March. Abyssal still hanging on there. Okay, that's surprising. Death Dealer Ray, after his rework, starting to jump up here, right? Um, and I think that's because like people really just did there wasn't like good answers to this. I have to wonder, by the way, like is De Death Dealer Ray is at five here, right? In the early stages. This is when Sharoon was first like released, right? So the fact that he went from five to three despite a uh, actual like hard counter being introduced to him says to me that people were just post banning it and just there wasn't any other good secondary like backup plan to the character which is why uh when we scroll up here he's still here at number three pre ban overall um moving into the late stage <sighs> see phantom Paladin at like not even on the list right jumps to number one so this character was what live for what like three weeks three weeks the last three weeks of the season Went from literally unreleased to number one overall pre ban And so she's number six here at 25.2% of all the pre -bans. Wow, that's crazy. So she's number six despite being out for like literally a tenth of the season. So that means this character's data is probably off the charts when we actually look at the other stuff. So you can see here's the pre ban rates by season. Okay. Landy, which is what we just saw. Uh, so this is the overall at champion and above. Let's look at legend and above here. Navy Captain Landy pre banned in 60% of legend games. The rest of this is kind of um, on point, right? Like this is exactly what you'd expect. The numbers are, are similar, right? Like we got 36 here with Death Deal Array, 35 here with Death Deal Array. 30, 33.8, right? So it's all like in line, but like Landy, right? Like Landy's 47, 38. At Legend, it's 60 plus. It is literally over half a game. It's almost two thirds of games. Landy was banned in Legend last season. That is crazy to me. First picks. <sighs> Look at this. Look at this. 27.9% of first picks. Or Laia. Yeah, so, like I said, this character is just the best character in Epic 7, in my opinion. Because she does everything. She's like an initiator. Uh, she's a win con. And she's an anti-control character. Uh, she's just so damn strong. C Phantom Paladin's 8.9%. Again, that's crazy that C Phantom shows up as the fourth most overall picked character. Despite only being legal for like three weeks for this entire season. That's that's crazy to me that she has this high of a representation. Despite the fact that, again, she's only there for like a tenth of the season. Anything else? Faithless Lydica, that's them uh, them Fumir Cleavers, right? Um, Arwell, I guess Arwell's like not that bad. Is there anything like Spectre? Okay, these people are, you guys are living in the past. The 0.5% the, the of you guys that are picking Spectre first pick, you guys are living in the past. This is what we call Boomer Epic 7, man. Like how in Magic they talk about modern players or boomer Juns players that like they they they're playing a game from five years ago. That's you guys. If you're playing Spectre in 2024 as your first pick, 
you're either named Cougar Bat or you just are living in the past. And even then, no disrespect, Cougar Bat, I think you're an excellent player. You're living in the past if you're your draft inspector is your first pick. All right, so let's see. First pick's early stage. Third, almost a third of games. Laya's, like, this is like her release week. Like, her release window, she's being played one third of the time. Right? And it, it doesn't even let go. The whole season. The whole, almost the whole season, Laya's still the most first pick character. I mean, this was my most picked character. Because she just gives the most stability to your draft. She's just the strongest overall character. The strongest and like the best combination of safe and strong is Laya because she lets you do everything, right? She's an anchor, cleanser, like just 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 everything. Um, okay, so here we go. First picks late stage. So third most picked in the last uh two months or so. Here is it's actually not even it's last five weeks. Last five weeks is C Phantom Polis. Again, only available for like three weeks. And this character is the third most first pick character of the season. Almost matching Conqueror Lotus. Like, Conqueror Lotus was up the whole season. The whole damn season, right? For, for three months. And we, by late stage, almost matched it. Like, almost eclipsed her. By 0.4%. That's crazy. Alright, so let's see. Okay, so here's the win rates. So, champion and above. Who's the highest win rate character? Jeez. Oh my god. Alright, so C Phantom Politis has 55.3%. Is that the highest win rate we've ever seen? Is this character like a disaster? Like, I mean, I personally think this character is a disaster, but like, is this character like a disaster level win rate in disguise? I don't think we've ever seen a character break 55% win rate in one of these. And not be like a counter pick. Like Bellion was the previous record holder, I think at like 57. But you don't take Bellion every game. Bellion's a counter pick only versus like Cleave, right? And then like even Fallen Cecilia at like the peak, the Crimson Arm at the peak, Arwell at the peak of how good they were. Karina at the peak of how good she was. It was like 54 something percent, if I'm not mistaken. You guys, let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong about this, but like. I don't think we've ever seen a generically strong character break 55 win rate. Granted, this is only champion, so let's go see what the, the other ones are. But that's that's really, short, really, really high. Abyssal at 54.7. I mean, this is a champion or above, so it's going to factor in the bottom tables too. So I, I really don't think that you're going to see too much of a disparity here. Abyssal, Phantom, Politis, Crimson Armin. Obviously, it goes like PB and J with Abyssal. Like, these two are commonly drafted together. Karina hanging strong there at 53. Where's Captain Lanny? Captain, Navy Captain Lanny, despite all of the pre-bands and how commonly picked, only 50% win rate. That's kind of kind of wild. Genua, 51.5%. Strong showing for somebody who's just uh, a pure DPS. Yeah, Ran, AOL. I mean, the, the Cleavers, I always expect, like Zio, I always expect these characters to appear lower on the win rate because the, peop the fact of the matter is the people who are playing them, they can get in two to three times the volume of games of the normal person, the normal player. Um, and win rate doesn't actually matter at the highest level. It's just points. And you could actually have a negative win rate and still go positive points. So uh, there's that. Uh, Faithless Lytica, 48.5. That's surprising. I thought this would have been a little bit higher. Death Dealer Ray also, I feel like, should have been a little bit higher. Last Rider Crow at 49.7% should say a lot, I feel like, guys. Because, like, this is a character that is not played by fast players, right? Uh, so, somebody like Zio, they can jam 2,000 games in a season easy and offset the fact that they only have, like, a 45% win rate and still get Emperor or Legend with that, right? So, that's, like... Fine. The people who are playing Last Rider Crower, the people like me, who are playing these like 10 minute games, um, they could not jam that many games in a season. It's just not as much. So as a result, when you see a losing win rate with a character that's played on a slow composition, it, it means it's because they're not good. And I still feel like that right now. I feel like Last Rider Crow is really not good. I think he is definitely falling off really, really hard, which is crazy because he literally just got a buff like what? Last October. Something like that. Like he he was recently buffed, right? He was lit literally like on top of the world, one of the best characters in the game, and now he's back to probably not usable status, 
it, it's pretty pretty sad. Moving on here to the Emperor Plus, this is where I play at. See Phantom Paladus tie with Abyssal. That's surprising. Um, we actually had a dip in Abyssal, but a much bigger dip in Sea Phantom in the win rate. Uh, Arwell still up here. Karina not even showing up here. Am I crazy? Karina's here. So this is like the amount of, like, I guess the, the picks. Okay, so yeah, there's no Karina here. So what, what's the difference? Silver Tide Christy? So Silver Tide Christy is played more here. Not a good win rate for Christy. That's another thing. This says to me, like, this is kind of how I feel, by the way. I don't play Christy a lot um, because I found myself losing a lot with her when I was just looking at the raw numbers and to see it reflected here in the player base. Um, Makes me personally feel a little bit better. Not because I, I think that Christy is a bad character or because I, I want to see Christy fail, but my gut feeling was that the character wasn't the best in the spots where I thought she was strong. Um, and so I shied away from her and it appears that other people probably have felt the same way here. Uh, yeah, no other like crazy things that stand out to me. Like Lua is still here. It's mostly all the same. The same. Faithless Lydica sees more play up here. Higher win rate, ever so slightly, too. All right, so let's take a look at Legend now. 55% win rate in Legend. Look at everybody else. Like, no one else is even close. It's like Abyssal at 53, Conquer at 51. Everything else is like 50% are losing. Red Lilius, that's surprising. Destina. Wow, Destina, bad win rate. That's surprising also. That, that also says to me that Destina at top level has fallen off. But she's not very good right now. Yeah, no. This is like kind of wild to me. This is, I think, the standout of what this infographic is. It's is it it solidifies what I said in, in my video that C Phantom Politis is broken and doesn't really have a whole hell of a lot of counterplay. Cause like I said, this is the highest win rate I can remember seeing uh on a character that's not a counter pick, like an opener. I don't think I've ever seen an opener. Hit these numbers. At least, again, if my memory is wrong, you can let me know down in the comments below. You'll probably post, be like, hey, but actually, Conqueror Lilius had like 59% or something back in this season. And if so, I apologize. All right, top 20 picks, all stages. Uh, apologies, we uh, we accidentally clicked the uh, the table here. Uh, yeah, okay. So, Laya, most played character by the player base last season. Not surprising. Landy, not surprising, especially when you consider the the crazy pre-ban rate in Legend. Uh, and then also the fact that she somehow still had a, 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 a winning win rate, despite the fact that she was the subject of so many balance patches targeting her, so much specific characters coming out to hate her out. Uh, the fact that she's drafted first, which makes her the most susceptible. Uh, yeah, Landy is definitely like what, like that character, definitely one of the the biggest mistakes that they've made. I feel like in the game's history, I, I'm I'm happy that you wanted to make something strong for turn two, but like that character is a bridge too far. Uh, yeah, Zio, su not surprising. Auden at first pick. Oh, this is not first pick. This is picks overall. Yeah, Auden showing up at, at number four. That's also not surprising, right? Because everybody has access to her, and she's just generically strong and good in a lot of scenarios. Last Rider Crow being at number twelve again, and you see. So he's the 12th most overall picked character. And as we talked about, like, look, even in Legend here, 48.6% win rate. Character's definitely fallen off. Politis. Uh, Politis, huge resurgence, actually, in pick rate. And I have to assume that's because of Sea Phantom Politis. Sea Phantom Politis doesn't even make the list for picks overall. Uh, and I think that is simply because of the fact that she hasn't been here long enough. We got our girl Lionheart sneaking in here. We don't get to see her win rate, though. One of the most picked overall. We don't even get to see her win rate. That's that's kind of sad. Oh well, the girl has so, still has some representation. Happy about that. All right, picks early stage to Laya. Last Rider Crow. See, this is what I'm talking about. Look, Last Rider Crow, second most played character at the start of the season. Right, seventh most played at the start of the season. Scrolling down here, he didn't even make the list in the last month. Just completely disappeared. Meanwhile, Arwell hanging hanging on strong, averaging like around like tenth place or so. Is there fourteen? Right, eight here. 
And then we got a 10 here. So, yeah, averaging about like 11. So, yeah, Arwell, uh, rock solid. She's what I was saying, triple A at the end of last season, I remember. Ambitious Tywin, Albedo, uh, Arwell, Armin, actually quadruple A, right? Uh, like, those are the characters that are uh, really strong as far as tanks go. Uh, and it seems like that's pretty accurate here. Phantom Paul, this 14th most picked character, despite only being available for like three weeks. That's crazy. Okay, so here's the pick data again. Some win rates. Let's see if there's anybody else we could see. Uh, Lionheart Sermia. Ugh. Not a, not a good win rate for her. So she's definitely not doing too super well in a post uh, Phantom Paul of this world. I still like playing her. Uh, she's what got me my Emperor frame pretty much last season. Her and Albedo. I was kind of abusing her like last two days. Because people kind of like forgot how to play against her. Uh, or just kind of wrote her off because... You know, I was pre-banning Paulus. Uh, no other crazy win rates here. We've already seen Abyssals very high, right? In general. You know what I noticed? Is they're like, they didn't do any of the write-ups. Normally, they do write-ups for this stuff. Hmm. I don't, I don't see any of it. Okay, so let's see. Average win rate of Legend players are 60% on Global. 59. So about 60%. That's about average. That's what I usually see for Legend League. Uh, still... Same almost last season, right? So we said Emperor Global. This is about what my win rate was last season. Yep, same average win rate. Number of games played uh, was 1235 versus 1065 the season before. I think this is the season I played the most amount of games, like 700 something. It's the most I've ever played in a season. So, yeah, more games played overall. Uh, first picks, win rate. Huh. So people always say that first pick has a, he's a huge advantage, but it's not that crazy. It's half a percentage point. That's actually, I really like that they put this in here. They didn't do this last time, at least as far as I recall. I think this is actually really huge because there's this huge misconception that you have like a 10% win rate advantage going first pick versus second pick. Right, I I think this is so smart of them to put this in here. So it shows that the the, the disparity is uh a little bit closer than people think. It'll be curious to see for this season contention if it flips because I feel like having second pick feels at least to me a bit stronger right now. Uh, so I'll be curious if that's just like you know all in my head or whatnot. Uh, average win rate, average match count, average win rate. Ooh, six percent in bronze. Uh oh, that's rough. I th really th think that they should uh, provide tutorials and better training tools to players to help them kind of transition into RTA, right? Because they don't really do a very good job. It's kind of like you unlock it, and then it's like go, and it doesn't like teach you like general strategy or you know let you have uh like simulate some drafts against some like AIs so that that way you could kind of get an idea of how to play. Those would be like really nice features to have i don't know if they'll ever do it but it would be really 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 good uh, as you can see as always master always has the highest average win rate because the people who are going to master are there just to get the skin and they're realistically probably champion players in disguise a lot of people who are sitting in master are actually you know just champion players in disguise um as you can see the amount of games just absolutely went uh, okay, finally, they gave a write-up. I thought I was going crazy. I was like, they normally do write-ups for this stuff. In the OC season, the meta was defined by the smooth fusion of long-standing heroes and those recently introduced. Uh, smooth fusion? I don't know about that. It's more like just characters that come out and they're just generally overpowered and just overtake the old ones. Thanks to the relentless determination of many heroes, the total number of matches played in the champion turn above increased by approximately 13% compared to the previous season. Leading to the rise of about 130 points of the cough lines for Legend of Emperors. What do you mean, relentless determination? You guys extended the season a whole week for Shaltir. It wasn't relentless determination. The Overlord collab gave us an extra week. <laughs> That's why everything went up by 13%. You gave us a whole extra week to crunch. Man. How quickly they forget. At the, uh, the outset of the season, Laia introduced early in the season, took the lead in shaping the meta, followed by impactful late season additions such as Genoa and Sea Phantom Paulus. That's an understatement as to impactful. 
The shift in dynamics resulted in a downturn in the performance of a few overperforming heroes from previous seasons, including Lua and Last Rider Crow. Okay, so we already talked about Last Rider Crow. Lua is pretty obvious because if Lia is the most played character and she completely dumpsters this matchup, then Lua is obviously not going to be uh, played as much. As the season progressed, hero band patterns tended to become somewhat stagnant, with conventional strategies becoming more apparent. Uh, yeah, I could agree with that. I mean, I was saying that the games were just very samey, right? A lot of blowouts. To address this issue, a band protection feature was introduced starting from the preseason following the end of OCs. The band protection feature aims to disrupt established hero band dynamics and provide a fresh experience for World Arena content. I actually do agree. Uh, right now, band protection, I think, has definitely changed the entire way we think about World Arena. It, it, you can't say it's a bad thing because I applaud the fact that they're trying something a bit different. It has created some very samey game feel, um, you know, for some, like but like a lot of the uh, the strategy in certain compositions and certain ways we draft, the way we think about drafts, it feels a lot simpler to draft now because it's kind of like, a, oh, my third picture just counter their third pick kind of thing. It makes it a little bit more brain dead. Um, but it did absolutely shake the game up because like Death Deal Array went from being like what second uh, or third like pick ban character to much harder to use now. Still very strong character, but it's so incredibly difficult to use right now uh, outside of picking him in like the four or five slot, which is like unheard of for a character to go uh, from basically like first pick worthy to uh, last pick basically in certain situations like we went from that in like a span of like two to three weeks that's kind of crazy right furthermore by reducing the fatigue caused by excessive mind games during the hero band phases we aim to enable players to play more intuitively all right am i dumb what the hell does this even mean by reducing the fatigue caused by excessive mind games during band phases are you admitting that you made the ban like the pick band phase simpler with band protection I, I I don't get that. <laughs> we hope this change will lead to the emergence of new and diverse metas, allowing for a wider range of heroes to be utilized in World Arena Battles. If that was your objective, I actually do think you succeeded. I think more things are playable now uh, than they were at the end of last season. We are diligently reviewing the feedback provided by heirs regarding the ban protection feature, and will continue to strive to provide a more enjoyable and refreshing content experience by closely observing various indicators. Your feedback is invaluable to us as we work to enhance the enjoyment and gameplay experience of the, of the World Arena. Not of World Arena, of the World Arena. We look forward to more exciting battles uh, and with the addition of the new ban protection feature and the contributions of heroes during the meta. We also kindly request your continued interest and participation in the upcoming E7 WC 2024. Thank you. Um, you know what? This might actually be the best infographic overall because aside from this awkward sentence, um, I think they were on point in their assessment. Because in the past, how many times have we seen like them just say like, "Oh, uh, Last Rider Crow was pr is prevalent because this character is here," and it's like, "No, it's because he got buffed." What the hell do you mean? <laughs> like, it's not because this character was stronger than that. It's because you over buffed the hell out of him. So we didn't get any of those. So I'm I'm kind of happy here for it. All right. Uh, yeah. Pretty much overall. The uh, infographic here kind of lines up with what we talked about in the previous video. So it checks. Uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed me rambling for, what is this, like almost a half hour now going over this stuff. Uh, as always, uh, if I missed anything or I made a mistake or you just want to be like, you dummy, this is the reason why, you can, as always, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a re uh, rest of the... Blah, 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 blah. I can't speak. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.